Hi there, Troy Parsons from The Hive. Now, a metric that we follow closely in our practice is utilisation rate. And what I thought I would do is take you through uh, how we actually calculate it in our practice and then give you the why and the context behind why we find this such a meaningful uh, metric for us to track. So when we talk about utilisation rate, the, the manual calculation is this. So first of all, we basically calculate what are the number of contracted hours per week. So an example I'm going to use here, so this uh, practitioner is engaged for 40 hours a week as per their contract. Now, not all hours contracted will necessarily be billable hours. In, in our practice, we have morning tea, we have afternoon tea, we have lunch, we'll have meetings, training sessions, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and also we do allow blocks of 20 minutes a day for communication time to give our practitioners a breath and a, and a moment to catch up any notes or any letters that they might need to write. So in this example, we've got 40 hours contracted a week, we then take away 10 hours a week uh, of non-billable time. So lunches, breaks, training, mentoring, you know, communication time, etc. So this leaves us with 30 billable hours per week out of the possible 40 contracted. Finally, we then look at how many hours of that available 30 were actually used for treating patients. So how busy were they on a given day? Now in this example, across the week, this practitioner at 30 hours of available billable time and 20 hours were actually used treating patients in this particular week. So when we divide the actual hours used for billing by the available billable hours multiplied by 100, that gives us a percentage. And in this instance, we've got a 66% utilization rate. Now for many years in our practice, you know, my only uh, real indication of how we were going was a full appointment book, preferably booked out a couple of weeks in advance, plus how much money we're sitting in our bank account and how much money we took each day. What happens though is that gives us no margin for error. We're running at about a 90 to 100% utilisation rate. What we know is when you know, things happen, life happens, we may have a practitioner decide that you know, they want to you know, leave the practice for whatever reason or events will happen that they can no longer work with us. And if we wait and we're sitting at 90 to 100% utilisation, we wait for that occurrence to occur, a practitioner leaves and all of a sudden we can't absorb the, the extra patients that we need to deal with week in, week out. We also know that when a practitioner leaves, we can't just turn on a tap and hope that a flood of suitable applicants uh, can enter our practice. So what I've learned over time is our ideal utilisation rate in our practice is between 70 to 80%. In this instance of 66, I think, great, this is, we've still got utilisation that we can grow into. You know, as we start to build our patient base, write out letters, you know, look at rebooking rate, et cetera, that utilisation rate will continue to grow, particularly as the, the relationships and the likability and the trust are developed over time. Also through letters, that practitioner is going to build their own personal brand where referrers will know that person is someone they can actually rely on and trust to look after their patients because they're going to keep them informed. Over time, between 70 and 80% is where we like to be. And as we start to approach 80%, that's when I go, right, I now I need to start my recruitment process. At this point, I still have 20 odd percent of my billable hours available to absorb if should a person leave or some uh, event occur. So utilization rate, one of our most valuable metrics, when we ho hover in that 70 to 80%, we can absorb more if we need to. And when you look at this, you probably think, gosh, there's a lot of time that's actually non-billable, but this is an investment in our team. It's an investment in our culture. It's helping train and mentor and provide an environment to support our practitioners to help realize their potential so they can ultimately serve their patients and our patients you know, to the best of their ability. It also helps us avoid burnout. So this is something that you know, we, we watch very, very closely and we kind of, like I say, 70 to 80% is our sweet spot. Something at 66, we know we still can grow into. Once we start getting beyond 80, that's when burnout can occur, but also too leaves us vulnerable to changes in the, um, you know, the t you know, particularly with the team uh, that we have around us. So hopefully you found this valuable um, and have a great day.